Hello and welcome to a three-part series of residual analysis in the context of multiple regression. In this first video I'll be checking the regression assumption of independence. Uh, that means uh, after we run our regression and uh, get the residuals, we're going to check the residuals which are our estimates of the population errors and uh, those residuals should be uh, look independent of one another uh, when we make a scatter plot of residuals versus the x variables and residuals over time. Okay, uh, as you recall this data was conducted as a design experiment I'm using two variables here incline and speed to help me understand pulse rate but the combinations of incline and speed were randomly assigned to the minutes uh, the, per the, the periods on the treadmill. Um, okay, let's run the regression. Go data, data analysis, regression, okay, input Y range, include the labels as usual. We're not taking into account period here. Labels in the first row, output range, Let's have that stored right here in G9. And then I also want to see, let's check uh, standardized residuals. If I check standardized residuals, I also get residuals automatically. I don't need to check it. And let's also check residual plots. Press OK. And this is the output I get. OK, let me quickly clean this up a little bit. I'll uh, eliminate this duplicate output right there this 95 percent confidence interval output for the slopes of the variables and the intercept uh, again I'm just cleaning a little bit I like to stretch out the first column I guess it's already stretched out somewhat let's format all the cells to like three decimal places Okay, and then I think in the ANOVA table here I'll format to one decimal place and have a comma separator. This is the, here's the p-value for the overall f-test. Excel calls it significance of f. Here's our regression coefficients and the, their respective standard errors. So now I can write out the regression equation. I won't do that now though because I did it in a prior video. Let's look at the residuals down here. Uh, the, this first column is actually a column of fitted values, but Excel calls it predicted Y, in our case predicted pulse. I'll just abbreviate that a little bit. And then here we have our regular residuals, Y minus Y hat, and then standardized residuals. I'm abbreviating this again so it's, the labels aren't so long. Let's format all the cells to two decimal places. Okay. So now a quick, uh, quick scan of this column of standardized residuals. I could look for outliers. Any standardized residual of at least two in absolute value would be an outlier. So here we have one, observation, minute 23. I had an abnormally high pulse rate. Y minus Y hat gives me a positive residual. So it's just barely an outlier, not a big deal. We expect some outliers. Okay, here is uh, residuals versus each of my x variables. Okay, I'm going to come back to this and clean this up a little bit. These will help us check independence. Let's first uh, make our own time series plot of residuals versus time because time was an aspect of this data. And I didn't incorporate a time factor, but potentially there's something changing over time. And if that's the case, our assumption of independence would be violated. Okay, so here we have observation number and residuals. So uh, let's make a time series plot out of these two columns. I'm skipping over the fitted values here by pressing on the control key when I highlight up. Go insert, scatter, connect the points because it's time series. And now I'm going to clean this up. I think I'll post this right, paste this right here. Let's get rid of the legend, click on it once, hit delete. The grid lines, click on it once, hit delete. Um, it looks like the residuals approximately range from negative 10 to plus 10. 
So let's get rid of some of those extra increments, increments shown there. Right click on the Y axis, format, oops, didn't want to do that. Right click on the Y axis, format axis. Let's go from negative 10 to plus 10 by increments of five. Let's have the X axis cross at negative 10. Under number, let's get rid of the extra decimal places. There we go. Uh, let's have the X axis, my time axis, go up to 30. Right click on the X axis, format axis. Uh, go up to 30 by increments of five is fine. Uh, let's have a boundary around the inside plot area. Right click, format plot area, border color solid, medium gray. And I won't, uh, generally I change the format of the points and the color of the line to black, but I won't take the time to do that here. Let's add a uh, axis labels, axis titles, horizontal. I'll call this the minute. And uh, for the Y axis, I think I'll write that axis label above, outside of the chart. And this is my residual residuals and let's bold face that and that's unitalicize it and then I'm going to get rid of the outside boundary right click format chart area border color no line okay now uh, eyeballing this it looks like there's a slight upward trend and if you wanted to see that right click for uh, sorry right click anywhere on the points add trend line and you can see, yep, yeah, there seems to be an overall upward trend. The residuals are getting larger on average as the time passes. Not sure why that is, but we could speculate. Um, maybe something to do with changes in my body. Um, okay, let's get rid of that. Now, why didn't the residuals average out to zero on this residual plot? The reason is we did not use a time factor as a predictor. Okay, so if I want a line at zero, though, I can I can do that. What I need to do is um, I'm going to have uh, I'm going to plot a couple of points. So at uh, minute zero, I have a residual of zero. At minute thirty, I have a residual of zero. I'm going to plot this as a new series in the graph. Right click, select data, add. The new series has these two X values and these two Y values. Press OK, press OK, and I'm going to uh, edit that. Right click, format data series, marker options, none. Uh, line color, solid. Uh, let's make it black. Line style, a little bit thinner. Okay, just as a reference point. Okay, and uh, again, looking at this, uh, it seems like there might be a violation in independence. I couldn't do a runs test on these residuals. The runs test is actually approximate on a time series of residuals, but uh, if we did that, it would lead us to conclude that this is not a random process and therefore the points are not independent. We could also do an eye chart or a moving range chart on these points, and uh, that is telling us that we don't see any violations in the Western Electric Zone test, so if we were to do that. Okay, so we have conflicting results here, but again, it seems like there might be some kind of violation over time. Um, not too serious anyway, but a little concerned. Okay, let's go to these plots up here. I'm going to delete the titles, delete the titles in each one, and I don't want to spend too much time cleaning these up. Again, what we're primarily looking for here would be curvature, but let's rescale the y-axis, format, go negative 10 to plus 10 by increments of 5, let's cross that negative 10, let's hit the, under number, let's get rid of the decimal places, okay, let's uh, incline my incline axis, I actually only have three values, 0, 4, and 8, so let's, uh, under number, Okay, we're all set. Oops, something went wrong here. Right click, format. I want the axis to go up, go to 8 by increments of 4. There we 
there we go. Right click on the inside boundary format, uh, solid line gray, uh, outside boundary format, border color, no line. Let's get rid of this residuals, put it up here. Get rid of the outside boundary. Okay. And again, I could change the points if I wanted to, but I won't in this case. Do the same thing for the other axis. Oops, axis option. Yeah, okay, that's right. Okay, let's cross that negative 10. I forgot to do that. And then for speed, right click format. I know that the speeds go from 3.6 up to 4.8 by increments of 0.3. There we go. So it looks better. Format the inside boundary again. Get rid of the outside boundary. Let's get rid of this residual. And uh, a little bit smaller. Okay. Okay. Now, the reason I put the residuals on the outside of the chart is if I go to view grid lines, no grid lines, then I could uh, highlight this whole section and paste it as a picture file, and it looks a little bit better that way. Okay, now primarily we're looking for curvature. If we see curvature, that violates independence. Let's add a trend line through the middle. Go right click, add trend line. Okay, there's our resi the residual should basically balance above and below this uh, zero line. Let's do it down here. Add trend line. Okay, it looks like for the most part they do. Um, in this picture, there's a hint of increasing variability, possibly. But uh, we don't care. When we check the regression of constant variance, we'll make our own plot for that. And if that shows constant variance, we're okay with this. This is not a problem. Uh, okay, now if you think there might be some curvature that you're not seeing, possibly that happens sometimes when you have huge clusterings of points, uh, densities of points somewhere. Let's right click, add trend line, but do a polynomial of order two. You can see there's a little curvature curving up, but it's very minor, and that would not be significant. Let's do this one, right click, add trend line, polynomial, little concave down curvature, but again, very minor, and that would not be significant if we were to add a squared term of incline or speed to our regression model. So um, I think independence is okay on these two pictures, independent check versus each of the x variables. Independence over time, I'm a little concerned there might be some violation of that, but nothing too serious. Okay, that's it for checking the regression assumption of independence in a multiple regression context.